and it all begins with light. It's such an integral part of the way we perceive the world, it's easy to take it for granted. But for centuries, understanding what light really is has been one of science's most enduring questions. The first steps towards understanding the properties of light were made in the third century BC by the renowned Greek mathematician Euclid. And he did it by thinking about something so obvious that most of us don't give it any thought at all. Placing the tiny chair very close to the camera produces a large image on the retina. And because we're not used to seeing tiny chairs in everyday life, our brains are tricked into thinking it's a normal-sized chair in the middle of the room. And the reason this illusion works at all is because to judge distances, our brains rely on a simple fact. The further away things are, the smaller they appear to the eye. And it was by focusing on exactly why distant objects could appear the same size as much smaller ones closer up that led Euclid to discover one of light's most fundamental properties. Euclid had discovered that light travels in straight lines. Realising how it travels marks the beginning of our scientific understanding of light. And it also meant that if we could divert it from its straight line path, we could change the way we see the world. But that leap wouldn't happen for another 2,000 years. It was eventually made in Renaissance Italy by one of the founding fathers of modern science. This is the book Galileo published in 1610. It's called Siderius Nuncius, which in Latin means the starry messenger. In it, he recorded his first observations of the night sky, the first anyone had ever made using anything other than the naked eye. Today, it's hard to imagine how anything contained in this little book was controversial. But you have to remember that back when it was written, the nature of the heavens was thought to be knowable only to God, and the Earth was considered to be at the centre of the universe. These are his drawings of the moon. Since ancient times, all heavenly bodies were thought to be perfect spheres, but with his telescope, Galileo saw texture in the surface of the moon. Deep craters and mountains that, from the shadows they cast across the lunar surface, he estimated to be some six kilometers tall. as well as showing the heavens to be imperfect. His telescope began to uncover their true extent, revealing 10 times more stars than are visible to the naked eye. And in the final chapters, Galileo reports the discovery of four stars that appear to form a straight line near the planet Jupiter. His drawings show how their positions change from night to night. Although they moved, they always did so along the same straight line. And from that, Galileo deduced that they had to be orbiting Jupiter. They weren't stars at all. They were moons. Through his telescope, Galileo had seen evidence that overturned the accepted dogma that the Earth was the fulcrum about which everything in the universe revolved. 
seeing moons in orbit around Jupiter meant that not everything went round the Earth. So, far from being the centre of the universe, the Earth was just another planet. The telescope had allowed Galileo to glimpse the true nature of the cosmos and our place within it. Isaac Newton is one of the world's most revered scientists. Best known for his theory of universal gravitation. And just like his laws of gravity, Newton's discoveries about the nature of light are among his most celebrated achievements. This is Newton's own drawing of what he called his crucial experiment. In it, he arranged a prism so that sunlight coming in from a small hole he'd made in the shutters of his bedroom window passed through it and projected coloured light onto a screen. Well, here's my light source. And here's my prism, which if I arrange carefully, I can get projected onto the back pillar. Of course, none of this was new. People knew that prisms produced coloured light. But what Newton did next had never been done before. He first isolated one of the colours using a slit. So, in this case, the orange light. He then passed that orange light through a second prism. Now, if Hooke was right, then this prism should add the other colours to the orange and reproduce the rainbow. But all Newton saw was orange light. The prism wasn't adding any extra colour. He concluded that the colours must have been contained in the white light in the first place that white light wasn't pure and prisms don't add anything to it. Instead, they split it up into its constituent parts. Newton named the colours that make up white light the spectrum. And when this discovery was combined with the telescope, it would show us something remarkable the spectrum would reveal precisely what it was we were looking at out in space. Understanding the spectrum had allowed us to read the story of the stars. It's quite incredible to think that what began as a simple experiment in a darkened room could reveal so much about the universe that the scant light from those tiny points in the night sky could contain within it the epic drama of the heavens. But that wasn't all the spectrum could tell us. Today, we know that it's made up of light of many different wavelengths and that those wavelengths extend way beyond the range we can see. The spectrum from the longest wavelengths used in radio communications to the very shortest wavelength gamma rays covers a range of 30 orders of magnitude. The longest are one followed by 30 zeros bigger than the shortest. That's the same as a spread in range of weights from that of a single grain of sand to the weight of all the water in all the oceans on the planet. And isn't instantaneous. It travels at a finite speed. Today, we've not only measured light speed with incredible accuracy, we've seen it in motion. 
This is a video made by scientists at MIT using a camera designed to monitor extremely fast chemical reactions. It has a shutter speed of around a picosecond. That's a millionth of a millionth of a second. The time it takes light to travel just a third of a millimeter. Now, look what happens when I press play. What you can see here is a pulse of laser light moving through a water-filled bottle. To us, this would appear as the briefest of flashes. But the camera reveals how the pulse travels through the bottle, scattering and bouncing around as it hits the water molecules. Light travels so fast, 300,000 kilometers per second, that slowed down by the same amount, a bullet would take an entire year to travel the length of the bottle. It's one thing to know that light travels at a finite speed, quite another to actually see it move. The discovery of the speed of light was hugely significant. Not least because it proved crucial to uncovering what light actually is. Born in the summer of 1831, James Clark Maxwell would become one of the leading lights of 19th century physics. His work on electricity and magnetism was one of the greatest achievements of the age. What Maxwell's equations show is that light consists of electric and magnetic waves traveling through space. So light is simply electric and magnetic vibrations feeding off one another as they move. And we now know that these electromagnetic waves have a remarkable property. They don't need to be waves in anything. They can travel through empty space. Light from the cosmos's most distant objects has taken billions of years to reach the Earth. But there's one source that has taken us so far back in time we've reached the very limit of what can be seen with light. In 1964, while converting a strange-looking horn antenna designed for early satellite communications to make astronomical observations, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson began to pick up a mysterious signal they couldn't explain. into microwaves and cooled to just a few scant degrees above absolute zero, light that had been traveling to Earth for almost the entire age of the universe. It hadn't come from a distant galaxy, and it was far older than any star. Penzias and Wilson had discovered that the entire universe was awash with light from the embers of the Big Bang itself. Called the Cosmic Microwave Background, it was released when the universe was just 370,000 years old. And it gives us a snapshot of the cosmos in its infancy. And here it is. The latest image of the Cosmic Microwave Background, taken by the Planck satellite and published in early 2013. It's sort of hard to express what an astonishing achievement this is, that from our small planet orbiting an unremarkable star, we've reached out into the universe and seen as far as it's possible to see with light.